The next question is the best aspects of being a coach. Well, I, I think the best aspect is just seeing that children enjoy themselves and our players enjoy themselves and to take the most away from the session that I put on and then come back the week after having, you know, administered the skill that I wanted them to learn. For example, oh, Jimmy, he's hitting the ball with his toe, like toe bunging in, he's not using the correct techniques. Then I, I, I kind of take it to a side and say, just do it like this, you know, play the ball on the floor to his feet. And then the week after he comes in, he can do it, which is brilliant. Now I'll just carry, carry on nurturing him so he can start to progress. And that's the same with the other kids, really. Any skills that they seem to be lacking, we work on it, we work on it, we work on it and try and progress it. And then just get them better as footballers, really. So, And it's just the enjoyment, just seeing them with a smile on their face and, you know, seeing them loving taking part in sport is, you know, that makes my job so much more better. Because I'm seeing them learn, then that's what makes me tick. That's what makes me tick. Okay, so the next question on the list is, give an example of a memorable moment that reminds you why you coach. And I'm going to relate back to Russia here. And I'm going to talk about little Daniel. He was one of the youngest kids that I was coaching. And he was a bit homesick. He was really a bit homesick. And one of the days in the camp, he just weren't feeling himself. And he wasn't really getting involved. And then we was doing a match. And I said, hey, mate, come here. I said, how about you help me referee the games? And he was straight on board. loved using the whistle. Because he never. He said he'd never used one before. And he was, you know, signalling for throw-ins, corners, penalties. Which is brilliant. And just at the end of the session, he was enjoying himself again and talking to the kids like he'd just come out of his shell a bit more. And for me, that was just such a sense of joy because I was just like, I've done well here, I've done well. I've, I've got him to, you know, integrate into the session again. And after them, for the rest of the days, he was just playing. He was playing. Still likes the ref occasionally, but, you know, I suppose that that's good because he might get into refereeing now. Who knows? The next question is, um, what is the most important lesson you want to teach participants? You don't always have to win. You don't always have to win. For me, that's big, you know, because people nowadays, they strive of winning, they strive of winning. But if you lose, you know where you need to improve. You know where you need to improve on. If you're winning all the time, have you got many key areas to improve? But if you're losing, you're like, right, defence isn't good enough today, you didn't put in enough tackles, and you're like, you know what, I didn't, I could have, you know, stuck to my man a bit more, I could have, you know, moved across the line a bit more, and just stuff like that, but that's what I want, you don't have to win, just enjoy yourself, you've got to enjoy yourself when you're playing sport, if you stop enjoying yourself, then is it the right sport for you, you know, training sessions are there to make you better players, but they're also there to enjoy it, so you can, you know, enjoyment is key, because if you enjoy it, you're going to try and play better, aren't you? So for me, that's what I want to teach participants. It's not all about winning. It's not all about winning. It's just about enjoying yourself, especially for the younger kids as well. Because we want them to learn skills. We want them to keep active so they don't become obese. And want them to make friends. So for me, that's what I always teach. You don't have to win. Come off at the end, shake hands, good sportsmanship. Carry on and learn from it. Learn from it. Because a week after, you might lose again doesn't matter we stay as a team and we learn from it and then if one of your teammates is feeling down go and give them a pat on the back and say you know you played well today we were just unlucky last but not least question is what does the perfect session feel like i wouldn't say it's ever such thing as a perfect session because i always say these areas to improve on all the time but a perfect session if it ever came close to it i, I think i'd feel like i was up in the stars or something and It'd be kids coming up to me saying, thanks, Carl, you did brilliant today. That that was an awesome session. I feel like I've put some of my touch. And then a parent coming up to me saying, yeah, can I give you anything? Can I can I tip you for, for the session that you put on? I think that would give me such a, such a sense of a perfect session, to be honest with you. And, you know, I think a perfect session would also be getting feedback from the kids at the end of the session and everything being positive. I've had a couple of them where everything's been positive, but I don't believe in the perfect session because I always say there's always going to be room for improvement. Okay, so that's the last of the questions today. I uh, hope you enjoy the blog post I'm going to post on as well as this video. Uh, please leave comments as well and any feedback. Thank you.